<clears throat> the 31st of December 2019, New Year's Eve. Most people were probably out enjoying themselves, drinking, eating, kissing. I don't know what people usually do on New Year's Eve, but I was at home as I always am on New Year's Eve. If you need to find me, I'll be at home in front of the TV. So 2019, New Year's Eve wasn't too dissimilar to how I usually spend the last day of any year. But something was different. Every single New Year's Eve, I write in my journal my plans for the following year. If I don't do it on the 31st, then I'll at least do it on the 1st. So on the 31st, I made the choice that I would not be making any New Year's resolutions. Now, if you know me, you know this is weird, okay? If you really, really know me, you know that I like to plan my life out like it's like, it needs to be like clockwork. Everything needs to, I, this needs to be done by then. If I don't get this, then I can't get that. So that has to be sorted so I can get that. I'm just very like, very goal oriented. And I think being goal oriented is a good thing. Um, if you can keep that under control and that when things don't go your way, it doesn't feel like the whole world is crashing down around you. And I realized that I overreacted, so to speak, um, because some of my plans didn't come to pass in 2019. And I thought this reaction is too over the top. We need to reel it back in. And so what I did on the 31st of December is that I said, okay, God, you have full control over what I'm doing. You take the year, you do with it what you want to do. I'll do what you need me to do. Make me what you need me to be, essentially. We start the year and very quickly we find out that there's this thing called the coronavirus. And this is where I'm kind of like, oh. I mean, I didn't have any plans for the year. Now, I don't think I realised at the time in December, New Year's Eve, the power um, of deciding to let God do his will in my life. I don't think I really realised when the coronavirus started. But if I hadn't made that decision in December, I'm sure I would have started panicking when we realised that the coronavirus had taken its, you know, established itself in the UK because then I would have known that my plans were potentially not going to come to pass. In, in March, um, a friend of mine, she posted about this Bible course that was happening, a five week Bible seminar course, Bible basics. And at the time I had, I was reading the Bible, I was working through it cover to cover, I'm still reading through it now, really taking the time to, you know, digest each and every part of the Bible instead of knowing bits and pieces, but not really like having an overall good perspective of the entire Bible. Anywho, so I was reading Bible at that time and she posted it, I saw it and it, I saw, I saw that she had posted it the night before the course started. So about 10 p.m. at night, I decided, I mean, I don't have anything else going on. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to sign up. I signed up. Next day, I started my Bible course for the next five weeks. Absolutely one of the best decisions I have ever made. And absolutely one of the best just highlights of 2020 for me. It was so incredible and it was so nice because obviously reading the Bible by yourself, um, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm a lonely person when I'm reading my Bible, but it's nice to have this course that was supporting my learning and reinforcing things, encouraging me to dig deeper in the word and how to research certain things that are mentioned in the word and how to figure out a timeline of when these specific things happened and matching different events together from different books of the bible it was just incredible 
and um, on Easter I read the Easter story. I read it in the order that it would have happened. So on the morning of Easter Sunday, I read the resurrection story and literally sobbed my heart out that morning and then had to stop myself from crying for the rest of the day because I'm not somebody that cries and I can't look like I cry, okay? I don't cry. Um, but it was just incredible and it was just like a confirmation. It's like, you know, I, I don't want to say I gave permission, but kind of like gave permission to, to God to have full reign of my life without me trying to control my life. And for the first time, I really let go and said, you know what, forget it, forget my plans, we'll do your plan. Because I can't see everything, I can't foresee what's going to happen in a month, but you have control and you know where you want me to go so lead the way so to speak and i think it's like i started making those moves to um become closer with god and keep choosing him and keep seeking him and the more i like went after god the more i sought after him the more connected and the, it was like i was experiencing god on a whole new level it was like a hyper awareness if that makes any sense and this was the time where obedient was born so during this time when i was seeking god and all that sort of stuff i believe i was coming to the end of the course or perhaps the course had ended and for a while i had been praying to god that he would give me a job all these jobs I was applying for, I would be praying like, God, please let me have this job. God, your will be done. But really it was more like, God, please let me have that job. Your will be done with my will, please, sort of thing. Um, none of those jobs came to fruition. And, you know, after a while, when you have been praying for such a long time and you're just not getting it, the thought came to me, maybe I'm praying the wrong prayer. Like maybe I'm asking the wrong questions because what I'm asking, I'm not asking really for God's will to be done. I'm also asking for God to let me have what I want to have in this moment. Um, and so instead I changed my prayer and one night I prayed and I said to God, forget all these jobs that I've been applying for, forget all of those jobs what is it that you want me to do please make it clear and i always say when i pray to god i always say make it clear make it so clear that even an idiot would be able to understand that this is what you are calling me to do so instead of asking god to give me what i want i i started asking him to give me what he wanted me to have and what he had for me i would say either the next night but i feel like it was two nights later i woke up at three o'clock in the morning and I tell you it was like it was like like that like I don't know I it's really difficult to explain because I don't wake up at three o'clock in the morning that's not normal um but I woke up it was just like phew, instant all these pictures I or just pictures of sketches drawings just like a flood oh, that's all i can explain it like a flood of just pictures like a you know and at first i was kind of like what what what's this and then i was like okay i need to like properly wake myself up so that i can note th them down so i noted them down on my phone and that's where it started i started making art i'm not a typical artist I do not come from an art background I come from a theatre and language background um, but it's really funny when you have a deep desire to be doing something and to be doing what God wants you to do because when I pray that prayer of God just make me like you know make it clear to me and, and just show me what it is that you want me to do I was kind of you know when you're at the end of your tether and you're kind of like okay just please like please sort of thing um, and he came through and he answered my question and ever since I've been making art 
um, been doing canvas work, been doing sketches, um, and the timing of it was perfect because one of my first sketches that I did was in response to all the Black Lives Matter things that have been going on. Um, it was shortly after we heard about the murder of George Floyd. And um, I just think it's wonderful that I had this new tool that I could use as a means of expressing myself um, and a way of almost taking the weight off of myself. It's, it's like art became a form of like therapy in a way um, and that I truly believe that um, at the moment and going forward that my art is only as good as my obedience. But yeah, I'm just really enjoying making art and I really hope that all the art that I create helps others, glorifies God, supports and encourages others and I just want whatever this may be or whatever this may become to just be a reminder to people to be obedient, to trust God because I don't know what he's going to do with this um, but I'm trusting that I know about how big or small my impact may be with it um, that hopefully it will help somebody um, or at least just point them to God. So yeah, oh, 2020 has been a really, really interesting year. And, um, but yeah, I know 2020 has been a really tough year for everybody. Um, and I just really want my work to, I just want it to be a light essentially. I feel like that should be everyone's goal technically as Christians to be a light in this world. So that's why I've decided to start sharing my art um, because you know, it's no good me keeping it to myself when there's people out there that could benefit from just seeing it. And yeah, we'll see how this goes. <laughs>